seven things that you need to have um, at home or have on you sort of at home if you become infected with COVID or a loved one does too. I don't know if you guys know what this is. Um, this is a little carrying case. I love this little carrying case, but you open it up and we have a pulse oximeter. Okay. I know you're probably like, what? And many of you probably already have these at home. Okay. Pulse oximeters work. This is actually my office one that I brought home so I could show you guys. You push the little button here to turn it on. And what you do is you open it up. It's almost like a little like closed pin, like a little mouth. Hello. 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 Anyway, you put your finger in there. Okay. Make sure it's turned on and you see the red. I know the light is kind of in, in the face, but you see like that little up and down there. So it's working. Ah, okay. Hold on. There we go. Um, okay. So numbers pop up and I know you're probably like, what is this? So what this is actually it was upside down. So this is better. I don't know if you guys can see my reading. This pulse oximeter tells me not only my, um, my rest, uh, my, my pulse, which is at a hundred beats per minute, which is the top limit of normal. Um, probably cause I'm excited to be talking to you guys. So my heart's like, blah, 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 blah. um, it's not abnormal, but I am particularly excited cause I'm talking to you guys. So, um, and by the way, 60 to hundred is roughly normal, but, but, but check with your doctor to see what pulse is right and normal for you. Not only that, but, um, it also tells you in addition, your, um, your, uh, oxygen saturation number. Okay. So this, this tells you in some ways how you're breathing. Okay. One of the things that we've known with COVID, one of the symptoms that people often have is trouble breathing because we know it can affect the lungs. In fact, before we knew it could affect and, and, and affect rather all these other body parts, we knew the lungs were affected. And so many people end up with respiratory issues. We know that. I know you know that. So this percentage tells you how well you're satting. That's your pulse ox. I'm at probably about 98% or so. I know you guys are going to ask me, you're going to say, well, what's normal? What's a normal pulse ox? And I thought really long and hard about this. I'm not going to give you a number, not because I'm withholding information, but because you have to understand that depending on what your underlying conditions are and your health status, that number may be different. If you were somebody that is naturally on, say, two or three liters of oxygen at home because of underlying lung conditions, your normal pulse ox is going to be different than somebody who uh, does not have those conditions, right? So I want to be very clear that with any medical device that you purchase, such as like a pulse ox, I'm going to make sure you go over it with your doctor about what normals you should expect for you and or your family member. Guys, these can be bought on Amazon. I, this is, I'm not a salesperson. I'm not getting kickbacks. This brand, I don't even know. I don't know anything about this. I'm being, I'm being very serious. But I'm telling you about this because I think it's an important thing to have at home, especially since so many people in America are getting sick, that if your loved one is saying, oh, my chest feels funny, da, 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 or I'm having trouble breathing, at least you can get some objective data while you're on the phone calling for assistance, emergency assistance, okay? Um, I actually bought... Um, a number of these for family members for Christmas this year. I'm not a saleswoman. I don't have a line of these. I'm not selling them. But I do think that especially given COVID, um, this can be a really important piece of information for you to have if you or someone you know is sick. And it's super easy. Like, again, I just said, you just open the mouth, hello, hello, put the finger in there, and it tells you what your heart rate is and your oxygen saturation. Okay, that's the first thing. Some of them come in these little carrying cases. There's many brands. You can check them out on Amazon. They're everywhere, okay? Next thing, you know about this. Hold on, battery low. You know about this. This is the um, the almighty thermometer, right? Um, now, we also know that um, temperatures or rather fevers are not always the case with COVID. You can have COVID and not have a fever, but if you don't have one of these in your house, your apartment where you're living, you need to get one. And I say this because you'd be surprised how many people do not have thermometers at home. So if that's you, you need to get one. You might need a couple to keep in different places just in case. I say this because I do have a number of patients every now and then that don't actually have thermometers. So once again, if you're having questions about your symptoms, you want to run things by your doctor, being able to have this objective data to tell us, okay, this is what my pulse is. This is what the pulse oximeter says that my breathing uh, oxygen level is. This is what my temperature is. Of course, remembering that um, not everybody with COVID will have a fever. Okay. Next thing that I think you need to have is gloves. See how beat up this box is? I've had this box actually for years. I think, 
I don't know where I got these. I probably have had this box for like a lot of years because I rarely, rarely use these. But, um, and you see it's like all like torn up and stuff like this. Um, make sure you get yourself a pair uh, or set a box of nitri nitrile gloves, okay? Um, these are super, super important because, you know, it's one thing if you are sick at home and it's just you, well, that's one thing. It's not that you don't need to disinfect or wash your hands and stuff. No, you do. But it's a little bit different than if you live in, say, a household with a family of four or a family of six or a family of two or whatever. If you are sick with COVID or a loved one is, you need to have gloves. Y'all need to be gloving up pretty much every time you um, inter every time you interact with the person that is sick, or if that is you, you need to be using gloves to wipe down surfaces, to disinfect, to do things like that. You need to get some gloves on hand, okay? If you're taking care of somebody at home that is ill and you need to um, pick up their dishes, maybe they put their dishes outside their door, you don't need to pick them up with your bare hands. You need to have gloves on to pick them up. By the way, you shouldn't be transferring person to person. I'll get to some tips on how to care for somebody at home uh, who's got COVID-19. They shouldn't be handing you their bowls and stuff. They should be setting them outside the door. You pick them up with some gloves, wash the dishes with gloves on um, to be as safe as possible. But once again, you know, these things, some of these are small things, but they can be big things. Very important. Um, next thing is water. Now, you know me, I love sparkling water. I'm not advocating for any particular brand. I just say water in general. It's important when we're sick to stay hydrated. I will say this with a caveat though. Some people have water restrictions. What do I mean by that? I saw patients today who either have lung issues or kidney issues. Sorry for the sirens, the windows open. Um, but if you have heart issues, kidney issues, lung issues, you, your doctor might have told you, hey, don't drink too much water. Hey, this is all the, the water you can drink a day, etc. If somebody has told you that you just can't be drinking, drinking, drinking water, you need to always listen to that. And if you have questions about how much to drink when you are sick, you need to call your doctor. But staying hydrated when we are sick is going to be very, very, very important. Next thing is this. Now, I know y'all see me talking about masks all the time. In fact, the video I posted earlier today got a lot of backlash from people who don't like me talking about masks, but you know I do because they are so important. I know you probably are saying, yeah, Dr. Jed, you tell us every single day to wear a mask, but this is what I'm telling you about now with the mask, which I did in the earlier video from today. If you are sick at home and there are loved ones in your household, not only should you guys be separated in different rooms, okay? So let's say that I were living with someone who was sick. The, I, the goal would be the goal, right? And not every family and every household can do this. But the goal is to have that person stay in their own bedroom. If you have enough bedrooms and not everybody does, you know, I live in a one bedroom apartment, so I understand if you don't. But the goal would be to have the sick person isolated away from those who are not sick. The other goal would be to have the sick person using a separate bathroom if possible, if you have a spare bathroom. The goal would be to have the person who is sick to be, um, uh, again, isolated and wearing a mask. They need to wear a mask because they are sick. Yes, even though they are in their own home and isolated in their room, when other people may come to help change the sheets or tend to them. And the caretaker needs to wear a mask too, okay? This is a time when you need to wear a mask in your home as if someone else is sick that you're taking care of, care of and you will be in their presence. You need to wear masks. And also, as I told you before, those of you who are caretakers, you need to wear some gloves too if you're helping change sheets, if you're helping them, you know, get, you know, bathe, get dressed or whatever you need to do because people who are ill sometimes need help. So you need to wear gloves, okay? Um, what else do I want to say about this? Also keep in mind, that you want to be separated. As I mentioned before, you got to be separated, but this is not licensed. You know, if you're sick, you don't need to be in the living room just chilling, watching TV with everybody else. No, 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 no. You need to be in your own space. If you are ill with COVID, that means you stay isolated from the others and you all wear masks in the home because someone is ill and that you guys wear gloves and you disinfect and hopefully the ill person will be able to be in their own bedroom and have their own bathroom for that time being. Also things like dishes, okay? You're not gonna share dishes. You guys know not to do that. But for those, um, you know, somebody who's taking care of somebody who's ill, you get them food, you get their plate, you make their dinner, you set it outside the door. Does it sound cold and callous? I get that it does, but you don't need to be handing something right to them and possibly exchanging things, okay? And remember, if you do have to get uh, in close contact, uh, and in general, by the way, wearing your mask is important. I know that was a long tip, but I had to go over that. Okay, next, um, this, all right. 
you're going to say, which vitamin is that? Which supplement do I take? Well, all these aren't vitamins or supplements. I will make a note about that because you guys always ask, which vitamin should I take? Um, what I do recommend is either Tylenol or, um, uh, or I should give the, the, the generic names, um, acetaminophen or ibuprofen. Again, I have no stock in either one of these. And remember that both ibuprofen and acetaminophen, one's Tylenol, one's like Motrin, Advil, things like that. Um, they're, they are meant for different people, meaning not everybody can take either one of them. So this is not for me to tell you which one is safe for you to take. This is for you to ask your doctor, hey, doc, if I get sick, is it okay if I take some Tylenol? Hey, doc, if I get sick, can I take Advil? You know, how much should I take? What should I be careful? This is to give you tips so that you can go to your doctor and say, hey, what do I need to do here? What do I need to, you know, do, do or not? This will help with fever. Um, it'll help with muscle aches, things like that, headache, uh, et cetera. Of course, it may not make everything go away, depending on how sick you are and what you're sick with, okay? But these are things that will help. Uh, many people check with your doctor. I'm not a singer. Last thing is, oh, that was good. That was pretty smooth. Look at that. Um, is um, this is Lysol, but I'm not advocating any particular brand, um, and I'm not representing any brand. Uh, but get your disinfectant out, guys. Okay, we know that disinfectants have been hard to come by a little bit with um, COVID cases rising. And I know some of you have started stocking the delivery trucks at grocery stores and CVS's and stuff like we had to do back in the beginning of the pandemic. Make sure you are cleaning and disinfecting surfaces frequently. Super, super, super important. I've done lots of videos on how to properly clean and disinfect. I've also done videos on how to make your own disinfectant if you've run out of them in the store. This is just a very brief overview. This is not an all-inclusive list. There are other things that likely will be very helpful for you um, getting over COVID, uh, healing from COVID, your family member as well. But I'm hoping these will give you some ideas. Guys, remember, if you want to know extra tips, some of the tips I talked about on how to take care of your loved one who's sick with COVID, just Google how to take care of loved one with COVID, CDC. They have an excellent page that lists really all of these things that I'm going through, not like the pulse ox and stuff like that. Those were some ideas that I think are important for me, but gives you ideas of things you need to be doing at home. Remember with COVID cases being on the rise, our chance of getting it is ever it's higher than it ever, ever was. So I hope that this was very, very helpful. So stay safe because I love you and I want you all to be safe. Okay, guys, I will see you soon. Bye-bye.